In this video, I'm going to talk about complementary base pairing and predicting the sequence of one strand when given the sequence of a template or complementary strand. So the first thing to notice is that in these two complementary strands of DNA, any time there's a T or thymine base in one strand, there's an adenine base in its complementary strand. In other words, T goes with A. Likewise, G goes with C. The second thing to notice is the direction in which these strands are running. So down here I notice that this is the OH end, or the three prime end of this strand, and up here is the five prime end of this strand. Whereas on this strand, the five prime end is down here, and the three prime end is up here. In other words, they're running anti-parallel to one another. The reason why they run anti-parallel is because this is the way the two strands physically fit together. So if I'm given the sequence of one strand, say a simple sequence like this, I know that its complementary strand is going to be lined up anti-parallel to it. So where the five prime end of this strand is, is where the three prime end of that strand is going to be, and vice versa. So just like in our picture here, the five prime end of one is going to line up with the three prime end of the other. And then using our complementary base pairing, we can predict the sequence. A goes with T, and C goes with G. We have a very similar case when we're considering transcription. In other words, an RNA molecule being made using a DNA template. So if here's my DNA molecule, and I want to know what RNA molecule is going to be made using this DNA molecule as a template, once again, I start by knowing that the two strands are going to be anti-parallel to one another. Because again, even if it's RNA pairing with DNA, the only way they're going to fit together is if they're running anti-parallel. And then using my complementary base pairing, I can predict the sequence. So you'll notice something a bit different here, whereas in DNA I would have had T here pairing up with A. With RNA, there's a different base, uracil, that pairs with adenine. Finally, even though RNA doesn't form the long double helix that DNA does, parts of the molecule can loop back and complementary base pair. Notice that here I'm on my three prime end of this part of the strand, and it's moving towards, moving this way. So here's the three prime end of this one and the five prime end of this part of the loop. In other words, even when we're looking at a part of an RNA molecule that's looped back to complementary base pair with itself, 
the part of the molecule that's complementary based pair is going to run anti-parallel. So to sum up, the two things I have to keep in mind with complementary base pairing is that in DNA, A goes with T and C goes with G. And in RNA, A goes with U and C goes with G. And in either case, complementary strands are going to run anti-parallel to one another. Or in other words, the five prime end is going to pair up with the three prime end and vice versa. Even if we're going from DNA to RNA.